Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So good evening world, good afternoon and good morning. This is Alex, welcome to our channel. This is EO's Marketplace News. So today I will be giving you the recent or the current news that I will be giving you two, okay? I will be giving you two news for today, so stay tuned. All right, so guys, I, just a reminder again to everyone that um, we here at EOS Marketplace News, we are not financial advisors. So we will not be giving you any advice or we are not giving you any advice. So every token or coins that we mentioned already or that we will be mentioning in our videos, please, please, please make your own research about them um, before you make any move, all right? Um, we are just here to guide you, but not to give you like advisors because again, we are not financial advisors. So we highly re recommend that you make your own research and then you can decide afterwards, right? You can decide for yourself what to do. Okay, so guys, um, moving forward, the news that I've been giving you today is brought to us by PCN or Preferred Currency News as always, right? Because this site is really reliable. And you can subscribe to PCN Preferred Currency News for only $15, guys. For only $15, um, that's monthly for recurring fiat. Or you can subscribe using the Coinbase. That's $180 annual subscription using any or your favorite cryptocurrency. All right. So I will be explaining that one later. But now let's proceed to our news. News for today, Japanese regulator to host regular global cryptocurrency roundtable. So here, Japan's top financial regulator, the Financial Services Agency, has exclusively shared with news.bitcoin.com the details of its first ever roundtable on cryptocurrency oversight. So regulators over from over 15 countries participated in the event to share information and discuss cryptocurrency regulatory issues. So now, Crypto Roundtable for Global Regulators. The Japanese Financial Services Agency, or JFSA, recently hosted its first ever international cryptocurrency roundtable. The event was entitled Roundtable on Supervisory Oversight of Crypto Assets, Recent Developments and Challenges Going Forward. The agency described the roundtable brought together relevant financial supervisors and international organizations, providing a useful opportunity to share experiences and discuss issues of crypto assets, which could contribute to strengthen international cooperation. Now, the JFSA told news that in the future, we want to hold this roundtable on a regular basis. JFSA considers it is important to share information with respective regulatory authorities and to build in supervisory cooperation in order to prevent a money laundering because of the borderlessness of crypto assets. According to the agency, participants have expressed their willingness to participate in similar roundtables in the future. Furthermore, the agency clarified the purpose of this roundtable is not to reach agreements on any new laws and regulations, but to share information on challenges faced by respective regulatory authorities and regulatory frameworks well, as well as to cooperate and work internationally. Right. Sharing information with over 15 countries. Four main issues were discussed by roundtable participants. The JFSA detailed, firstly, recent crypto-related technological developments and challenges were discussed. Secondly, the, regula uh, the regulators share their thoughts on the supervision of cryptocurrency trading platforms. The third topic of the discussion was about possible areas of international cooperation, followed by the final topic of investor protection and market integrity.
Without identifying specific countries that participated in the first round table, the JFSA confirmed that more than 15 countries, financial supervisors, and international organizations have participated. Wow, that's good to hear, right? Okay, now recently, the Securities and Exchange Board of India, or SEBI, wrote on in its annual report that it sent officers to Japan and a few other countries to discuss cryptocurrency and initial coin offering regulations. South Korea also previously said that it had been cooperating with the Japanese regulator on crypto related matters. Now, regular study group meetings. The Japanese regulator is also hosting study group meetings to discuss various crypto regulatory issues, particularly those concerning the regulation of cryptocurrency exchanges. The seventh study group meeting took place last October 19. All right, guys, so among the main topics of discussion was derivatives trading with cryptocurrencies as the underlying assets. Now, according to the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Association, a self-regulatory organization, margin trading accounted for about 80% of all total cryptocurrency transactions in Japan last year. It was also noted at the meeting that some crypto exchanges offer 25 more leverage, which could lead to significant losses for investors. The association has processed a self-regulatory measure of limiting the leverage to f times four, or multiply with four times, or four X. Okay, the association whose members compromise all 16 regulated cryptocurrency exchanges in Japan is currently waiting for certification from the JFSA to be able to enforce self-regulatory rules on its members. Also, discussed at the meeting was the issue of whether there should be a deadline for deemed dealers. The exchanges that have been allowed to operate while their applications are still being reviewed by the JFSA. For example, if they are not able to meet the registration requirements after three years, they may lose their deemed dealer status, according to one suggestion at the meeting. So currently, there are three deemed dealers in Japan. That's CoinCheck, LastRoots, and Everybody's Bitcoin. Right. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So, guys, that's the first news for today. Again, it's brought to us by PCN. Now, the second news for today will be the Visa set to launch blockchain-based digital identity system with IBM with IBM in Q1 2019. Wow that high tech, right? So this news is also brought to us by PCN or Preferred Currency News. Now let me tell you the details. All right. Now, um, Visa is readying its blockchain-based digital identity system for cross-border payments for lunch in the first quarter of 2019, according to a press release published last October 21st. The system, um, the system dubbed Visa B2B Connect, will provide a blockchain-based digital identity solution for financial institutions to securely process cross-border payments. The system reportedly token, um, tokenizes sensitive business data, such as banking details and account numbers granting them a unique cytographic identifier that will be used for transactions on the platform. So Kevin Fallon, global head of the Visa Business Solutions, suggests that the system will help with fraud. B2B Connect's digital identity greatly reduces the opportunity for fraud that might otherwise exist with a checks. 
ACH and wire transfer today while also helping companies remain compliant as part of their regulated financial ecosystem. All right. Now, from a technical standpoint, the solution will integrate a hyperledger fabric framework, which is host, um, hosted by the Linux Foundation and was developed without with rather with input from IBM with Visa's core assets which the release claims will establish a scalable permission network for use in the financial sector now Jason Kelly the general manager at IBM blockchain services is quoted saying that the system represents one of the most powerful examples to date of how blockchain is transforming payments. Yes, right, I agree. Now, FinTech provider bottom line technologies, which serves 1,200 financial institutions according to the release, is also partnering with Visa on the v B2B Connect system, a partnership that will enable mutual financial institution clients to access the system. All right. Now, as reported last month, Thailand's fourth largest bank, Cassie Corn Bank, just recently joined the B2B Connect corporate cross-border payments initiative. According to Visa's website, B2B Connect was first previewed back in 2017 and counted the U.S. Commerce Bank, South Korea's Shenzhen Bank, the Union Bank of the Philippines, and the United Overseas Bank in Singapore as among the first partners processing pilot payments ahead of the commercial launch. Wow! Even as it embraces blockchain's potential, Visa, alongside MasterCard, has this month reportedly moved to group cryptocurrency and initial coin offering, or ICO, under a new high-risk securities merchants, classification and meaning interaction with them will be subject to additional monitoring wow we hope that it will be international right we hope that um some other countries will also apply this one yes i think it will it will be a big help all right so guys that's the news for today so i hope that um if you like to be the first one to get notified, then visit preferredcurrency.news. Okay, it's www.preferredcurrency.news, and you can be the first one to get notified of the new updates if you subscribe. All right, so don't forget to subscribe. All right, subscribe now. Um, again, you have I. I also, I mean, I told this earlier, you have two options. You can use your PayPal. If you'd like, you can just click on this link here, which says PayPal for monthly recurring only $15, guys. Okay, it's a good investment. I promise that's only $15 per month fiat. Or if you'd like the Coinbase option here, you can just click on this um, link and you can um, pay for 180 only that's 180 and that's not monthly but annually okay $180 annual subscription that's to be paid with your favorite crypto all right so here in preferredcurrency.news what we do this information is presented as news and education you must do your own final research as I've said you must do your own final research to make your own decisions for yourself. Exactly, right? Okay, so here, guys, if you want to check out other videos in our channel, you can just simply click on this, uh, one of these videos here, right? Okay, we have a lot of videos that you want to watch. And if you have questions or concerns before subscribing, um, you can contact us, Donald Lewis or Donald the Guru, his um, contact information is available on the site, so you can visit, or you can directly send a message. Your name is required, your email, of course, and, of course, your message. And just simply click the send link. All right, so, guys, here, here, look, 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 subscribe now. All right, be the first one to get notified, and you can tell your friends, and you can share it.
the prefer uh, this website to your friends also all right so guys thank you so much for watching this video this has been alex it, my, it was my pleasure to be with you today and i hope that you will be watching our videos okay so subscribe bye